censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord then Moses said unto Aaron this is it that the Lord spake saying what made the fire in Leviticus 10 strange also why did God give such a harsh punishment Moses was given exact instructions to clean the people after the golden calf incident in Exodus 32. Aaron was the high priest. He trained his sons, Nadab and Abihu, to prepare the necessary regulations for the offerings. All the steps were kept. The fire was maintained on the top of the altar the grain offering was said to be pleasing to the Lord. The priest takes a handful of the finest flour, some olive oil, along with incense, and this was burned. Aaron and his sons were allowed to eat what is not burned of the grain, but the priests were not allowed to add yeast to the flour in the sanctuary. So, what did Nadab and Abihu did wrong? They didn't give the fire. They didn't get the fire off the altar. The priests made their own fire and their own incense. This was a violation of the regulations. Also, the uh, incense, right? They were made off of uh, an Egyptian uh, form of incense. So. Why would these priests not accept the regulations without question? Moses was not always completely trusted according to the stories. God chose Aaron because he was a good speaker and also he was already a priest in Egypt. Aaron was one of the was one of David's ancestors. Uh, his speeches were backed by miracles done with his own walking stick. The first three plagues was brought on when Moses asked Aaron to stretch out his walking stick. In this you shall know that the Lord is God. All the miracles were performed by Aaron through Moses. This can help us understand another verse later on in the Bible. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. The actual flame produced by the incense was strange and offensive to God. I believe Nahab and Abihu was Egypt, uh, used the Egyptian uh, incense used in the worship of the Egyptian gods. The incense was called kapet, which means incense as a general term. The list of ingredients is long. Eleven of the eleven of the resins are flavored uh, by particular gods. Three come from the eye of Ra. One comes from the left eye of Osiris. One is white and comes from the uh, eye of thought. Burning 
any of this would have been unacceptable to God. Elijah's sacrifice was accepted. God consumed it with fire, even when it was soaked with water. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Cain's, on the other hand, was rejected. He refused to um, follow the regulations where blood was given for remission of sins. And the result was when he tried to light it, it was strange fire, just like uh, just like in the book with Aaron's sons. Cain, Cain's uh, sacrifice was rejected. When the word speaks of being baptized in fire and the spirit, the fire in that sense is the Holy Spirit. We have to believe in God and be in his presence. Our faith can't be a long distance relationship. Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. We're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human life. According to the word, God uses fire to accept offerings given to him. The enemy copies everything God does. So what is the, the counterfeit to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is referred to in feminine terms in the word. So, so too, the creative power in Hinduism is a universal goddess. This power is said to be to lie dormant at the base of the spine. This is the serpent power. It is said to travel up the spine and into the brain. This produces the awakening of the third eye. I have felt both the Holy Spirit and the energy that comes from the Kundalini. Uh, they are very different. I have since prayed to close up the uh, movement of this energy because it was wrong. It was all kind of stuff going on with that. The manifestations of Kundalini and the Holy Spirit are wholly different. So today we still have to be uh, cautious about the type of fire that we give to God in our offering. It is as if from some mysterious crack, no, it is not mysterious, from some crack the smoke of Satan has entered the temple of God. Pope Paul 6th June 29th, 1972.